Margarita again from Margarita Sewing School and today we're going to talk about ironing versus pressing. This is so important in everything that you do whether you're being quilting or making a tote bag or making a garment of any kind. Pressing is most important. Ironing is when you need to iron a skirt on your way out the door to lunch and so you put it on the ironing board and you're going to iron back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. This is ironing. So we're going to be pressing when we are sewing and this is so important and to have the right equipment now back in the day they had this iron this is actually an iron that they set on the cooktop for it to get hot they would iron 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 until it was cool put it back to heat up again no plugs no anything can you imagine this and this weighs a whole lot this is a child's toy that is just so much fun to have. This was from my childhood. This actually plugged in and the iron got hot so that we could play with an iron. We would never give that to our children today, but I thought you would enjoy that. So working over this way, this is called a pressing ham. And this is for getting in oddball corners, sleeve heads, all kinds of, any place where there's a curve. It's how I, I use it for ironing uh, darts in. This is just for seams. And it is, this one's kind of nice. It can go straight into a sleeve, for example. Um, and you can press le seams of pants legs with either one of these. Now this is a purchased one. This is homemade. We have a lot of homemade things here. And you know what is on the inside of it? This is an old life magazine that you make a sleeve and you just shove this thing in there so that it's good and tight and hard. And you can get this in a sleeve up a leg a pair of pants, anything that's little that you need to drape over, but this costs absolutely nothing. These are my very old homemade, this is a, a sleeve board, and these two are for different widths of seams. I use them depending, this one's great for collars. Um, this one I've used, oh gosh, almost anything in this one, and you can see how well loved these are. But these are of the homemade variety, and yes, you can purchase, um, actually one that kind of combines a bunch of different things in it. Um, I like the separate ones. Um, this is a clapper and this is for when you're fooling with wool and I'll show you how it work, actually works on, on a piece of cotton but I'll show you it's a clapper and this is for getting good flat seams. So I have my iron here um, and it is heating up. If you, this is a very old ironing board and best case scenario for ironing boards is a couple of layers of an old wool blanket because it gives you that thickness and it is going to hold the heat which is most important when you're fooling with wool. Uh, this is a steam iron and what I have learned with, with this iron is to put bottled drinking water in here. Not from the tap, just bottled water because our infrastructure here around the school is very, very old and there are all kinds of minerals and things in there. And we need water that is completely clear because then the irons won't leak. That would be the first thing that will happen is your brand new iron will start to leak if you're putting tap water, which is what they tell you to put in it. Uh, but I learned after many years and many irons that I've gotten rid of that that's the best thing to put in here is like drinking water. Um, also, this is something we use, good old spray starch. Whenever you have something that's really gonna give you a heck of a time with a crease like from the fabric store, this is gonna help you get out. I use it for a lot of different things, Batiste, uh, delicate work. Of course, you always test everything on a scrap. Also, press cloth, most important. This is the best thing out there. This is a piece of silk organza and it's great to put over whatever you, number one, I like it because you can see through it, so it's what you're doing, but you can also put a much hotter iron on here than you can on a piece of fabric, on another piece of fabric, and so you're gonna get a better press on that. So a seam cloth is, I mean, a press cloth is most important. Um, you can even use a men's handkerchief, but again, that's 100% cotton, and this is gonna get a whole lot hotter. So this little piece of wrinkled fabric here, I'll show you real quick um, how this works when I'm fooling with spray starch. I've got some really good wrinkles in here. And in this case, I am going to iron and I'm gonna iron this back and forth. And with the spray starch, um, you can get rid of all of those wrinkles so that if you're gonna cut this up for quilting or you're gonna make some delicate little pocket or a collar, you're not going to skew the size of it at all. So, um, and this, this iron is, I like it because it's got a nice point on it so you can get in corners of things, which is also important to, for a garment to turn out really well. 
So we have got here two possibilities here. Here's a little seam, and this is an example of pressing. With this seam, I'm just gonna, what I call press it closed before I start messing with it because I want, it'll set the stitches in. So I'm gonna put this down on here like this, and you can see the stitches kind of fade away into there, which is important. And then I'm gonna turn it over this way, and I'm gonna open up the seam allowance like this, and I'm going to press this open. And again, sometimes you may have to press press if it's a big long seam, but you can see how this gets good and flat on that side and it's flat and smooth on this side. Again, a prettier skirt or a pant bag or actually anything else you're doing. So that's the case with that. Now this one's kind of fun. This is a curve, which I, I have not pressed yet. I have clipped the seams here because with a curve, you absolutely have to. With a pressing ham, you have to find the place on the ham where this is gonna work. And um, I'll just give you a quick demo of what this will look like, depending on, on what you're working with. Um, you know, you can turn it up this way and you're gonna just move this around the, the ham. And as you work, you just open it all up as you go like this and usually one will get into the next. See how my fingers do? And I oftentimes finger press that down real quick before I hit it with the iron. And this way, see, I can work on a curve. See how nice that is gonna be? And uh, so that when I do actually turn it out, I've got the, the curve in there. So that's how this, that's how you use this. It's got a wool side, which is really nice when you're working with wool. This one has cotton on the other side, just muslin, and that's how that works. So this is what you do when you are trying to make your, your projects look really a whole lot better. Oh, and I forgot the clapper. Let's say I have just ironed this and it's nice and warm and this is a piece of wool. And what you do with this, is slam it down on here, hold it down for a few minutes. And you're assuming you've got wool underneath and this is a piece of wool. This is gonna hold the moisture in and giving it a few minutes like this. And there are times when you're gonna beat it to death because wool sometimes does not turn the corner real well. And that will, again, it would give you a nice smooth seam on a piece of wool. So I hope this helps, happy sewing.